of hearing Joseph is in Potiphar's house. But then one day Joseph walks into the house to find no one but Potiphar's wife there. And on a thorny rape charge, Joseph is thrown into prison. He has went from daddy's favorite to being hated, to being tossed into a pit, to being sold, to being sold again, and now he's in prison. But there in that prison, the Bible declares that the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor. He was being set back to be set up. And while in that prison, he meets two other men, the chief butler and the chief baker of Pharaoh. Both have a dream. Both tell Joseph the dream. And when Joseph interprets the dream to one, he declares in three days, you will come out of this prison and you will be restored back to where you was before you came into it. To the other, he interprets your dream that in three days you will come out, but the king is going to hang you on a tree. One dream got life and the other got death. What was the difference in their dreams? If you go home and study that book, study that chapter, you will find that the one that was restored, and when he began to tell Joseph about his dream, he talked about things blooming. He talked about things blossoming. He talked about things growing. And the one that got death began to tell Joseph about everything that was taken from him. About what he used to have. About where he used to be. And how bad he has it now. Proven that life and death is in the power of your tongue. What we need is some people, even though they're in prison, that can still testify about things growing and things blooming. Honey, that's revival. God will give you a restoration when you can still testify about revival when you got people walking out your doors. God will give you a breakthrough when you can keep preaching about revival even though your bank account is empty. God will give you a miracle when you can keep believing revival coming even though you don't feel it and you don't my prison ain't gonna kill me. There's a Bible coming. My troubles ain't gonna kill me. I got a Bible coming. My troubles ain't gonna kill me. I got a Bible coming. Amen. Glory. Well, he's in that prison. He meets those men. God placed Joseph in this particular prison for a future deliverance. Sometimes God puts us into uncomfortable situations in order to bless us with favor that will turn into our deliverance. It is our difficulty that develops our deliverance. It is the problems that produce the power and the hindrances that harvest the healing. And while in this prison, God gave them the dream. But then after they were set forth, the one that was restored forgot about Joseph, forgot to tell Pharaoh about Joseph until God gave Pharaoh a dream. In fact, two dreams. And Pharaoh goes throughout all the land trying to find somebody to interpret the dream. Nobody can. And then he's reminded of a, of a man named Joseph still in the prison. And Pharaoh calls Joseph to come forth. Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. He shaved himself. He changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Pharaoh tells Joseph about his dream. I love this part. Joseph looks at Pharaoh and says, you got two dreams. And the interpretation is this. You got seven good years and you got seven bad years. And what you need to do, Pharaoh, is stock up as much food, stock up as much water, stock up as much corn during the good years. That way when the bad years get here, the bad won't be so bad because you got leftover blessings. Alright. I want to go. We can get some saints to get a hold of that mentality. As you know as well as I do, some people don't go to church 
until there's no choice but to go to church. And they don't praise God when they do come to church unless God does stuff for them. Unless God touches them in certain ways. But we need to understand if we can praise God in the good times. If we can worship God in the good times. If we can live for God in the good times. Then when troubles hit home and hell breaks loose in our house, the bad won't be so bad because we got left over faith. Pharaoh begins to tell Joseph about those dreams. And the Bible said that Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none as discreet and wise as thou. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto my word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Joseph went from daddy's house to a pit, to a slave, to a servant, to a jail, to the second in charge of a nation. Why? Because through it all, he was set back to be set up. God was about to do something wonderful in his life. This is where I want to get to tonight. Because two years after Joseph's advancement in Egypt, Jacob tells his boys, we are hungry, we are starving. And I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. And a few chapters later in Genesis 45, then we come to our text that he tells his brethren, God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. Guys, I know you want to kill me. I know you hated me. I know you tried your best to ruin my life. I know you wanted me to die. You wanted my dreams to die. You wanted my hope to die. You wanted the possibility to die. You hated me, so you wanted to kill me. But you know, I've had 13 years to think about this mess. And if it had not been for your hatred, you would have not wanted me dead. And if you guys didn't talk about how to kill me, Judah would have decided to sell me. And if I hadn't been sold, I would have never met Potiphar. And if I had never met Potiphar, I would never have met his wife. And if I didn't meet his wife, she would have never had me thrown into prison. And if I wasn't in prison, I would have never met the butler and the baker of Pharaoh. And without meeting them, there would be no dreams for me to explain. And with no dreams to interpret, the butler would have told Pharaoh about me. And if Pharaoh would not have heard about me, he would have known what not to do in the bad years. But guys, you chose what you did. But I'm saved and you're saved. And Egypt is saved. And we are delivered. And I made up my mind in the past 13 years. It's not you that sent me here. But it's God that sent me here. 
response in your worship. I am still here. I am not That's why Job did after all his mess. And when they sat in that sackcloth and ashes, it let everybody that came by know they're in mourning. They just lost something. They're in depression. Leave them alone. Don't bother. Uh -huh. yes. But the only way to show those same individuals that the mourning is over and the depression is over Trials are yes. over. Yes. Yes. They couldn't walk by and they'll just say, hey, hey, everything's fine. I'm doing better now. No. They showed their depression by the ashes and the sackcloth. Yeah. But when the depression was over with, yeah. when the crying was done, yeah. and they would walk by, they would see those same individuals who just the day before was crying and sackcloth and ashes. Now, the sackcloth had been done away with. The ashes had been swept up. And they were dancing. The only way to let the outsiders know I am victorious over what had tried to kill me was they had to see some dancing. 